Hi guys, a caller named John phoned into the Nick Ferrari show to complain about immigration. Now he sounds like a Reform UK activist, as he is probably one of very few people who can list off their steps to deal with the boats. John, however, believes the EU is at fault here in two ways. First, they aren't bothering, in his words, to control their borders, and second, they're dumping migrants in Britain. Nick Ferrari, of course, pushed back on such rubbish. Nah, he didn't. Both the Conservatives and the uh, Labour, uh, they're not smelling the coffee, yeah? yeah. And you're, what, you're, what do you mean by that? You're, well, I you're in, well, smelling the coffee is, yeah? The EU, yeah, is not protecting its borders in the Mediterranean, yeah? So the EU is, in effect, dumping on us, yeah? This, you've got to call a spade a spade, basically, yeah? They can't be bothered to protect their borders, yeah? They're... Stop saying yeah, because it's not true. So, first of all, he said they're, the EU is dumping asylum seekers on Britain. Does he understand that the vast majority of asylum seekers stay in Europe? They don't go to Britain. A small percentage finally end up in Britain. And those asylum seekers want to be in Britain. They don't want to be in Europe. So, anyway. The second point he raised here about how, um, well, Europe isn't bothering to control its borders. Do you have any understanding of how big, how long the European coastline is in the Mediterranean. For example, Greece alone has a coastline of something like 12,000 kilometers. Britain has something similar. And Greece is one country in the European Union. And, and this is just the Mediterranean. There's also other, there's another border, a land border that the European Union have as well. It's impossible to monitor the entire border. Get, get, they're becoming a tent, tent uh, nations over there. Can you name some of these tent nations? I'd love to know the names of some of these tent nations so we could go and investigate if they have become tent nations. And in effect, uh, they're going to do nothing to, uh, to, 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 to stop the migrants coming over here. You've you, you got to call a spade a spade. Yes, now, right. when you spoke to Richard Tice, uh, Natasha Clark said that, that both the Conservatives and uh, uh, Reform are similar uh, policies. Well, you, you forgot to ask Richard Tice what his solution was, right? And his solution is, I'll give you a four-point plan. Number one, dismantle the Home Office, not fit for purpose. Number two, leave the ECHR. Number three, call a state of uh, national emergency. This is a Brexit dividend because we're a sovereign nation, believe it or not. Number four, pick up the migrants and legally and technically deposit the uh, migrants back to France. Okay, so let's go through each of these. Dismantle the Home Office, number one. And do what? How would dismantling the Home Office stop the boats? Now, Richard Tice actually added to this in another interview, and he said what he'd do is how he'd run the Home Office with staff who believed in dealing with immigration. True believers. That was the actual term used, true believers. It's a bit like Brexit once again, but then Richard Tice was a senior member of the Brexit party. Number two, leave the European Convention on Human Rights. Okay, once again, you don't leave the convention, you leave the Council of Europe. And what, join the other ex-members <laughs> um, once again leaving the European Convention on Human Rights how does that impact the Good Friday Agreement what's your solution for the Good Friday Agreement they probably this guy has probably never even heard of the Good Friday Agreement number three call a state of emergency as he described as a Brexit dividend or a Brexit benefit well that's not a Brexit benefit but how would calling a state of emergency stop the boats this is about policing is it about rounding people up, suspending their human rights so they can be deported? Maybe that's what he's talking about. Number four, legally deposit people back to France. Legally. <laughs> legally is doing a lot of heavy lifting here because you need to have an agreement with France. Unfortunately, Richard Tice was never asked about this. What is your agreement? What type of agreement are you going to have with France? Because you, you can't just take people back to France. France can say no. Then what do you do? You can't dock if the French authorities don't give you permission. And you know, on top of that, Nick, what I would do, for every boat that comes in, I'd rescind an EU licence, fishing licence, into this country. Yeah. That has to be the cherry on the, on the cake here. So for every boat that comes in, we take away an EU licence. Do you understand that the EU fishing boats are catching fish for the UK market. 
So you want to deprive the UK market of its fish. Well done. That'd be, that's a great solution. So <laughs> we've damaged ourselves with Brexit. Let's damage ourselves even more. And to what end? How is this going to stop the boats? Is it the people smugglers or the asylum seekers are going to go, oh my God, the, um, the EU fishing fleet is losing licenses. Well, we shouldn't go to Britain. This is a fundamental, there's a fundamental misunderstanding of what's going on here or lack of understanding. Asylum seekers want to arrive in Britain because they have friends, family or some sort of connection to Britain. They speak the language or they have a connection. That's why they want to go. French speaking asylum seekers, people who have friends, family connections in France will normally stay in France because they have no, there's no motivation to go to Britain. They want to rebuild their lives in France. Some don't want to be in France, they want to be in Britain. Why is this so difficult to understand? And eventually, a lot of these asylum seekers will eventually do some sort of jobs because they can't live on the 40 quid a, a week. They want to rebuild their lives, they want to contribute. Are there bad eggs? Yes, there are. There are bad eggs, bad apples in every basket. And those people will generally end up you know, in prison or being deported. But the vast majority, and that's the Home Office talking, the vast majority are successful in their claim and they eventually move on to refugee status and rebuild their lives in Britain and then end up working. Why do people have such a problem with this? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.